the next group of drugs that we will discuss are the drugs of the gastrointestinal tract. So these are the drugs which affect the digestive system. Well, as a very brief review, the GI tract or the gastrointestinal system consists of uh, structures such as the mouth, the esophagus, the stomach, the small intestine, and the large intestine. Uh, usually, vomiting, diarrhea, uh, and constipation are GI problems that usually require drug intervention. So, yun yung mga symptoms na madalas nagpapaliwanag ng uh, involvement ng GI tract um, as a homeostatic imbalance. So, these are also the drugs that we will be discussing. And uh, those are antiemetics, the emetics, the antidiarrheals, the laxatives, the anti-ulcers, um, just to name a few. So first are the antiemetics. Vomiting or emesis, uh, the expulsion of gastric contents, has a multiple or uh, it has a multitude of causes. Motion sickness, infection, food intolerance, surgery, pregnancy, pain, shock, effect of drugs, uh, radiation, uh, problems in the middle ear. Ito lahat ay posibleng mga dahilan ng uh, vomiting or emesis. No? While uh, nausea, it's a queasy sensation. It may or may not precede expulsion. And um, the act of vomiting or nausea, no? Um, meron kasing tinatawag tayong cerebral centers. Uh, the chemoreceptor trigger zone, it's uh, near the medulla. And the vomiting center, it's actually in the medulla. Uh, these cause vomiting. Initially, marami tayong non-pharmacologic measures na pwedeng gawin if a patient experiences vomiting or nausea. Give weak tea, no? increase the fluid intake kasi nagwa-vomit niya siya. But a weak tea, yung medyo uh, hindi ganun ka-strong yung kanyang sensation para hindi lalo ma-trigger yung kanyang vomiting. Ganun din ang gelatin kasi medyo bland yung diet o yung lasa. Gatorade and Pedialyte, it consists of many electrolytes kasi kapag nagwa-vomit ka, Hindi lang naman liquid ang nawawala sa'yo. You might have also fluid and electrolyte imbalances. No? Crackers and dry toast, these are easily digestible foods at mabilis mag-replace din, lalong-lalo na ng glucose as the primary source of energy of our body. And of course, uh, IV fluids. Now, um, aside from these non-pharmacologic measures, syempre meron tayo ng mga tinatawag na anti-emetics, which, which could be non-prescription or prescription. The non-prescription anti-emetics are the antihistamines. It is used to prevent motion sickness, but meron siyang minimal effect on controlling severe vomiting. It should usually be taken 30 minutes before travel. No, um, side effects are similar to anticholinergics such as drowsiness, dryness of mouth, and constipation. So, ito yung cyclizine hydrochloride, dimenhydrinate, and meclizine hydrochloride. So, sa Pilipinas, um, sikat o common na papanood natin sa television yung bonamine. Okay, it's for motion sickness. Um, over-the-counter drugs, so you to prevent nausea and vomiting, no? yung dizziness, vertigo caused by motion, usually they inhibit the vestibular stimulation in the middle ear. Uh, yung diphenhydramine also, uh, it's uh, also for allergic reactions, but as H1 blocker, okay? Now, these are the prescription antiemetics, the antihistamines, the anticholinergics, the dopamine antagonist, 
the benzodiazepines, serotonin antagonists, glucocorticoids, the cannabinoids, and other miscellaneous drugs. Many of these drugs act as antagonists to dopamine, histamine, serotonin, and acetylcholine, which are all associated with vomiting. And they also act on the chemoreceptor trigger zone and the vomiting center. While dyan sa mga yan, the cannabinoids, uh, they act on the cerebral cortex itself. Drug combination is also effective for chemotherapy-induced nausea and vomiting. Uh, lorazepam, glucocorticoids, at saka yung mga serotonin receptor antagonist. Magaling siyang i-combine for that. Nursing considerations. Clients with glaucoma should avoid many antiemetics. Uh, which means no, that sa taong may glaucoma na may high intraocular pressure, many antiemetics can increase the intraocular pressure uh, para ma-prevent natin yun. You have to assess urinalysis before and during therapy because sa urine, dyan natin nalalaman no, as waste products ng no drug na na-metabolize. Monitor for dehydration and hypovolemic shock because again, when you vomit, you of course release a lot or you excrete a lot of fluids. Provide mouth care. Minsan, kaya pala siya nagkakaroon na lang ng pagsusuka kasi ang asim ng pakiramdam niya sa bibig. Kaya tuloy-tuloy nagsusuka siya. Avoid over-the-counter preparations, lalo na kung hindi ka sigurado ano ba yung cause ng emesis. So have yourself checked, have the doctor check you kung ano talaga yung triggering factor for the vomiting. Alcohol can also intensify sedative effects of antiemetics. It may even mask uh, yung totoong reason for having the vomiting. Teratogenic in the first trimester, kaya nga hindi dapat na basta-basta mag-take ng over-the-counter drugs. And report dizziness, report mouth sores, report fever, report sore throat, especially when taking the drug. Uh, if given parentera, binibigay lang siya IM and IV. But, may mga anti-emetics na mostly per OREM, meron din per rectal. The second group of drugs are the anti or the emetics. Emetics, on the other hand, induce vomiting for individuals who have consumed certain toxic substances before absorption occurs. Vomiting can be induced actually by putting the finger at the back of the mouth. Um, but, no, if the caustic substance is the cause, or if the cause of the um, yung gusto mo na i-induce yung vomiting is a caustic substance such as ammonia, chlorine, bleach, toilet cleaners, battery acid, gasoline, paint thinner, lighter fluid. In this case, vomiting should not be induced. Why? Because regurgitating caustic substances can cause additional injury to the esophagus. Nung nilunok mo, nagka-injury na ang mucosa ng GI tract. Kung I-regurgitate yan, magkakos pa siya ng further injury to the esophageal tract. Kaya ang ginagamit is activated charcoal. It is given when emesis is contraindicated. To prevent aspiration, vomiting should be avoided if petroleum distillates are ingested naman. No, yung gasoline, kerosene, paint thinner, lighter fluid, very toxic. What does the activated charcoal do? Activated charcoal absorbs the caustic substance. Ina-administer ito 30 minutes and may cause tongue discoloration, 
black stool, abdominal pain, diarrhea, and constipation. Of course, kailangan ng gastric tube. Sa gastric tube, ipinapasok yung activated charcoal and then um, doon din siya ina-aspirate. Okay? Now, ano ngayon yung gamot na nag induce talaga ng vomiting? Syrup of IPCAP induces vomiting by stimulating the chemo uh, receptor trigger zone. It's in the medulla and it acts directly on the gastric mucosa. You will only give syrup of IPCAP if the client is alert. Of course, kasi iinumin niya yon. Should be administered within 60 minutes of poisoning, taken with a glass of water and uh, not milk or carbonated beverages because um, na, na, nawawala yung absorptive capacity niya. So, bak, hindi siya dapat ma-absorb. Effective ito within 15 to 30 minutes after administration. And then, watch out for the vomiting. Magvomit yung patient in a matter of those minutes. Third group of drugs are, are the antidiarrheals. The antidiarrheals are drugs which simply stop or treat or manage diarrhea. Diarrhea can be mild to severe and it's potentially um, causing fluid and electrolyte imbalances. Maraming dahilan ang diarrhea. It's a symptom of an intestinal disorder with several causes such as kumain ka ng spicy or foil, spoiled foods, may fecal impaction, kaya yung paglabas ng pupu mo is nagiging watery sa pagpilit na mailabas siya, bacteria or virus, toxins, drug effects or drug reaction, laxative abuse, especially for the elderly, malabsorption syndrome, so problems ng uh, intestine, stress and anxiety, bowel tumors, or other inflammatory bowel diseases. Now, these are the antidiarrheals. Loperamide, diphenoxy na may kasamang atropine, octreotide, bismuth salt, kaolin pectin, furazolidone, and rifaximin. Um, opiates, no, in general, decrease intestinal motility. Thereby, it decreases peristalsis. That's actually an action one no, of loperamide. No? Lomotil um, causes urinary retention. Uh, lomotil is diphenoxylate hydrochloride plus atropine. Okay, isa siya sa mga antidiarrheals din. Si loperamide um, acts specifically on the GI muscles and um, adsorbents, no? the, on the other hand, si mga adsorbents, ito yung um, bismuth at saka si kaulimpectin, mga adsorbents yan. The adsorbents coat the GI wall and they absorb bacteria or toxins which cause diarrhea. Again, opiates ang loperamide and uh, diphenoxin. Okay? Uh, ang bismuth naman, no, the bismuth salts, remember that bismuth salts contain aspirin. So you have to recall ano ba yung mga nursing responsibility whenever I am giving aspirin to patients. Okay? Nursing considerations. Not given for more than two days and should not be used if ever fever is present. Because mama mask yung reason for uh, the diarrhea. Uh, Agad-agad. So, kailangan ma-assess agad yun. Assess, avoid milk and foods rich in fat. May be contraindicated in clients with liver disease, narcotic dependence, ulcerative colitis, it's um, inflammatory bowel disease, or again, glaucoma. And si patient, monitor for tachycardia, decrease RR, CNS depressions, and always assure or always encourage drinking clear fluids. So that we know na kung ano man yung lalabas sa stool, 
it will manifest how the intestines are somehow. Because if we drink dark fluids, ang nag-expel a dark in color, we might think, ano ba yan? May GI bleeding? Or is it because of the fluids that you drank? Okay? Next are the laxatives. Laxatives are for constipation. Uh, common ang constipation among the elderly. And uh, do not give if client is nauseous. Constipation is the accumulation of hard fecal material in the large intestine, which is a relatively common complaint and again, a major problem for adults. Maraming associated factors, just like yung diarrhea, so dahil meron kang insufficient water intake, uh, kaya nagkukulang ng <clears throat> pagpaproduce ng feces na may water material for easier passage of stool. Poor dietary habits, less fiber in foods, merong bowel obstruction, chronic laxative use, again, especially sa mga elderly, neurologic disorder, uh, ignoring the urge to defecate, lack of exercise, lack of ambulation, lack of physical activity. And again, mga effects siya ng certain drugs. Now, these are the different groups of laxatives. Osmotic laxatives, they are hyperosmolar laxatives. So, salt, lactulose, glycerin. They pull water into colon and increase water in feces to increase the bulk of the stool. And that will stimulate peristalsis para lumabas siya. Osmotic diuretics cause an alkaline urine. And we know that mostly or in general, we have an acidic urine. Uh, stimulant laxatives, on the other hand, they irritate sensory nerve endings in the mucosa. That's why nagkakaroon ng urge to defecate. Uh, stimulant, chew, tablet, and shake suspension. Kung ganun man siya, chewable tablet or suspension. Do not take stimulant laxatives at bedtime. Ang effect nito ay fast. Or baka mamaya, nakatulog ka na and then you won't feel the urge to defecate makapupo ka while sleeping. The bulk-forming laxatives are non-absorbable natural fibrous substances. It is the most natural of all the laxatives. These uh, promote large and soft stools because they absorb water into the intestines. Again, nag increase yung bulk ng feces and nagsistimulate ulit ng peristalsis. But sometimes with bulk-forming laxatives, patients might a complaint of sudden chest pain. Uh, it means that the laxative may be settling in the esophagus. So, drink fluid. Chloride channel activators, they activate the chloride channels. Saan? Doon sa lining ng small intestines. This will lead to increase again intestinal fluid secretion and motility. And lastly, the emollients. Ito yung stool softeners or lubricants. These are surface acting or wetting drugs. So, ginagawa niya, pinapababa niya yung surface tension doon sa intestine. It promotes water accumulation doon sa bowel and stool. It is used to prevent constipation also if a person is at risk for constipation and tumutulong din to para mag-decrease yung straining during defecation at hindi ka laging umiire. No? Too much straining can cause vagal nerve stimulation. So we can also give these drugs to prevent that, not just with constipation. What are these specific drugs? So yung mga osmotic, yan yung Glycerin, suppositories, lactulose, uh, magnesium hydroxide or the milk of magnesia, Epsom salts, okay, or meron ding mga enema. Yung stimulant naman, bisacodyl, dolcolax, may suppository, may oral, no? bulk forming, ito naman minsan iniinom, tinitimpla. 
para siyang powder, ginagawang juice. Chloride channel activators, lubiprostone, and yung mga emollients, no, docusate, potassium, docusate calcium, docusate sodium, and the mineral oils. The next group of drugs are the anti-ulcer drugs. Ano ba ang peptic ulcer? Ano ba ang ulcer? It's a broad term for ulcer occurring either in the esophagus, in the stomach, or in the duodenum, sa upper GI tract. Bakit ba nagkakaroon ng ulcers? One is because of release of excessive hydrochloric acid from the parietal cells of the stomach. It's influenced by histamine, gastrin, acetylcholine, and pwede rin dahil sa hypersecretion ng pepsin. It's a digestive enzyme activated at a pH of 2. So very acidic. And obviously, it can cause mucosal damage. Now, other predisposing factors, bakit pwedeng magkaroon ng ulcer yung isang tao is because of foods and fluids that usually contain coffee, fatty foods, fried foods, or the highly spiced foods. Nicotine is also a predisposing factor for ulcer. Stress, pregnancy, may massive trauma or major injury. H. pylori, it's the most common causative agent causing uh, ulcer, and again, yung mga effects ng drugs, such as NSAIDs, corticosteroids, potassium salt, and some cancer drugs or anti-neoplastic drugs. Ano ngayon ng mga anti-ulcer drugs? One is uh, tranquilizers. These drugs reduce vagal stimulation and decrease anxiety. This causes minimal anti-ulcer effects. Okay, lalo na yung sakit na nararamdaman pag may ulcer. Anti-cholinergic drugs, on the other hand, they delay gastric emptying and uh, it's used more for duodenal ulcers. Kasi sa small intestine siya mas effective. Antacids, they usually promote ulcer healing because they neutralize hydrochloric acid and they reduce the pepsin activity. Yung mismong acids doon sa stomach ang kinokontrol niya, kaya antacid. These do not coat the ulcer. Okay, other drugs coat the ulcer. H2 blockers, they prevent acid reflux in esophagus which block H2 receptors of the parietal cells dun sa stomach. Again, nire-reduce niya yung gastric acid secretion. The proton pump inhibitors, they also suppress gastric acid, usually up to 90% more than the H2 blockers because they inhibit a hydrogen potassium ATPase enzyme na nasa gastric parietal cells. And these block the final step of acid production. Kaya very effective siya. Next are the pepsin inhibitors, non-absorbable drug which combines with protein to form a viscous substance that covers the ulcer and protects it from acid and pepsin. This is what I was telling kanina, these drugs are the ones which will now coat the ulcer. Siya na yung mismo mag-heal nung nag-ulcerate na gastric mucosa, esophageal mucosa, or duodenal mucosa. And lastly, the prostaglandin analog anti-ulcer drugs, they increase cytoprotective mucus in GI tract. And again, they cause moderate decrease sa pepsin secretion. Antacids and H2 blockers are also sometimes used um together. Or again, they are used in combination. Pero hindi siya dapat pinagsasabay. Antacid and H2 blocker. You have to take it at least one hour apart. So these are the drugs. Tranquilizers, Librax, the anticholinergics is propantherine bromide. Antacids. Aluminum antacids usually cause constipation. Magnesium antacids usually cause diarrhea. Okay? 
But si Maylox, it's already combined. Aluminum and magnesium. So, mas least yung side effects niya. Para masabi natin na effective ang antacids, the first effect is relief of burning pain. Okay? H2 blockers, simetidine, famotidine, ranitidine, usually ito na yung mga uh, may mga injection na ganyan, no? Uh, meron ding oral. Uh, famotidine may cause gynecomastia in males. But that's just temporary. Proton pump inhibitors, uh, esomeprazole, lansoprazole, omeprazole, the other prazoles. And uh, the pepsin inhibitor, sucralfate. And prostaglandin analog uh, anti-ulcer drugs, misoprostol. Uh, this should be given with food for best absorption. Cytotec, um, sadly, is being used um, illegally no, for abortion because it can um, stimulate uterine contractions because it's a prostaglandin no, na nag uh, stimulate ng contraction ng muscles ng uterus. But initially, it's a drug for ulcer, which is taken already. Nursing considerations. For antacids, avoid administering with other porporium drugs because it can delay absorption. Do not give or cautiously give with tetracycline. It's an antibiotic. Um, digoxin. It's a cardiac glycoside for CHF. Quinidine, antacids, no other antacids. It can inactivate the drug. Again, give one or three hours after meals, uh, possibly at bedtime also. Drink at least two ounces of water after antacid to make sure the drug will reach the stomach fast. Watch out for possible constipation, diarrhea, again with antacids, especially if aluminum or magnesium. Avoid milk or foods high in vitamin D uh, and other foods that, it also, that can also cause gastric irritation kasi mas magiging mabagal yung pagdaling. For the H2 blockers, administer just before meal to decrease food-induced acid secretion also or at bedtime. So pwede siyang bigay na IV if IV in 20 to 100 ml of solution. So better na um, ini-instill siya or ini-infuse. Report pain, cough, or hemoptysis as adverse effects. So, avoid smoking also. Again, separate ranitidine, which is an H2 blocker, or antacids dosage at least one hour apart. Do not engage in driving or dangerous activities. Why? H2 blockers kasi can cause dizziness. It's common. I also mentioned kanina, no, it can cause gynecomastia at idagdag pa yung impotence. But again, these are reversible effects. And the elderly are very sensitive to the effects. Confusion and dizziness are more common among the elderly. Yung pepsin inhibitors naman, no, administered them on a drug, administered the drug on an empty stomach. If you are to give it with antacid, give antacids 30 minutes before or after sucralfate. Si sucralfate, yung magpapagaling dun sa sugat. Allow one or two hours to elapse between sucral fate and the other drugs. Because it's sucral fate who will coat the ulcer, it usually requires three to four weeks for optimal healing to occur. Monitor for severe and persistent constipation, especially kung long term siyang ginagamit, and indigestion may also occur. That's the end of um, the gastrointestinal drugs.